So you'll never bowl a cricket ball as a fast bowler fully fit. It's a different beast. It's a, and you need to be a unique animal to bowl mm -hmm. fast. What's up guys, welcome back to Life in the Pitch Season 3. This week we have Stefan Jones as our guest. Stefan's an ex-professional rugby and cricket player and the only player till date to compete in both professionally. Um, he is the fast bowling coach for Arsene Royals, a director and founder of Pace Lab, and one of the modern greats on technology and fast bowling. In this episode we speak about fast bowling, uh, panic and anxiety attacks with cricket, and several other topics as well. So stay tuned for the episode. So, how did you start your cricket career? Um, I started when I was at school, uh, where we didn't actually play much when we were at school. Um, it was more of a club. It was a club thing. When you're school in Wales, it's all rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, very young. Very young uh, but I started later than most do now. I started when I was about 13. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, up until then, I just watched my dad play and coach. So, I learned that way. Mm -hmm. And then played rugby at school and cricket uh, at the clubs. So it was very much rugby season, cricket season. And mm -hmm. that's how it continued, really. How was it managing the two sports when you were really young? Um, it was fine when I was young. So I was, I'm the last person in the UK to play two of them professionally. Mm -hmm. So I played professional rugby and professional cricket. Mm -hmm. uh, I only did professional rugby and cricket for two years together because it was too hard. Mm -hmm. But... It back in those days, it's not that long ago, but mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it was um, it was season, so the summer was cricket and the winter was rugby. There was mm -hmm. no real crossovers, whereas now it's the pre-season is massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so in your cricket career, you moved around county to county a lot. How was it playing in different conditions, different wickets, meeting new people? How was that change? Yeah. How, how did you adapt to it? Uh, I didn't. It was only three, really. But it was so I was Somerset for 11 or 12 years, mm -hmm. then Derby for three or four, and then mm -hmm. North Ants for uh, two, I think. So it was only three counties. And I think the modern day is very much more than that now. But the pitches in England don't differ that much. The one in Wantage Road for North Ants was a bit of a dust bowl because we, we had Graham Swan. Monty Panesar and Jason Brown, so three quality spinners. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't bowl much when I was in North Ants, which probably meant I had an extra four or five years of my career. Mm -hmm. um, Somerset, Taunton wicket was very flat. It was very, uh, it was very much a bat in paradise. Mm -hmm. um, back then, it, it was uh, legendary for it. So you had to earn your wickets. Uh, and then Derby was, was very similar, really. Mm -hmm. All have changed a bit now because of the rulings with the roller and the, so it's all a bit, um, yeah, it's a bit different. But back then you did play on very flat wickets. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely did you have a wicket that went sideways, really. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice do you have young fast forwards, young players who struggle with injuries and how do they motivate themselves from an injury? Yeah, fast bowling is, is unique. It's a different mindset. So if you're, if you're a, a bowler that that will only bowl when it's if he or she feels fine, perfect, you'll never bowl a ball. So you'll never bowl a cricket ball as a fast bowler fully fit. Mm -hmm. There will be something niggling you somewhere. You'll have a sore hamstring, you'll have a tight lower back, your shoulder sore, or you have blisters, or you have a sore heel. So if you're waiting for perfection, you might as well either turn to spin or focus on your batting mm -hmm. because fast bowling is not not for you fast bowling is tough but there's no better thing to do uh, mm -hmm. in the world and you know Shoy Bakta was uh I, I met him about 20 for 20 years ago now maybe not yeah 20 years ago and he said he could bowl off a short run and probably have a longer career but people haven't come, come to watch him bowl off a short run mm -hmm. they came to watch him bowl a 40 50 meter run up and mm -hmm. that's that's the mindset you need for a fast bowler. There's a couple of kids floating around that that do that. You know, Mark Wood is is injured a lot, but when he mm -hmm. plays, it's box office. People come and watch. There's yeah. a kid now, kid now for Somerset, Sonny Baker. He's the he's the same thing. Um, so just 
it's a different beast. It's a, and you need to be a unique animal to bowl mm-hmm. fast. What sort of advice would you give for like young fast bowlers who kept, keep getting injured or lose the process of enjoying their game because they keep getting injured? Yeah, but there's, there's a reason why they're injured. And that, that is ultimately it. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is, there's a reason for everything. So are they injured because they're not strong enough? Mm-hmm. Are they injured because technically they're not efficient? They cross over in the base alignment. Mm-hmm. Um, that causes lateral flexion of the spine. You know, the spine can, la- can flex and extend and rotate, but it can't do all of them at once. Mm-hmm. So if you have a heavy back foot contact, if you spend too long on back foot contact, you'll cross over. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you spend too heavy on back foot contact because you lack ankle stiffness, you've never braced your front leg because you can only have tension on one side of the body if you can have a lot of it. So mm-hmm. there's loads of reasons. Um, knowledge is not out there yet on some of the reasons that I, the things that I talk about, but hopefully slow, especially in India, actually, uh, they're embracing the methods and the results are, are massive. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um, to you, Rob Shorter, one of the greats in Rajasthan Royals, how was that exposure two years ago and what sort of things did you take away from that experience? Takeaway was, um, it, it is just a game, whatever level we play, mm-hmm. it is a game. Uh, and the principles are very much the same. You bowl your best ball at the right stages of the game. You know your game. Um, the preparation is the same. Uh, obviously, the pressure is different. The razzmatazz that goes around it, the pressure from the crowd is different. The pressure from the public is absolutely extraordinary in India. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, fundamentally, the game is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. But it's just the pressure we put on ourselves, really. If you if you take it back to the basics and do your skill to the best of your ability, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's a f- fine, fine detail separate uh, the very best and um, your weekend warrior, you know. But it's mm-hmm. it's the quality of that one basic skill that they repeat over and over that determines a successful mm-hmm. cricketer, really. And... I was fortunate enough to work with, yeah, the, the very best for that one year, well, two years that I was there. Mm-hmm. So today and today's where many cricketers and athletes around the world have said they struggle with mental health. Ben Stokes recently admitted that he's taking a quick break from cricket. What's your advice would you give a young cricketer or any cricketer around the world who struggle with mental health and don't know the correct approach to mental health? Yeah. But there's lo- lo- lots of help now. So there's lots of help out there. Uh, you must talk, you have to talk, don't suffer in silence. But what I would say for, and obviously these guys, you know, at, at the top, there's silly pressure, you know, there's the scrutiny on everything you do, which will get you down. Um, but yes, they get very well paid. And yes, they, it's their choice, but they're still human beings. They still have a mum, a dad, uh, a daughter, a son. So we need to remember that first. Uh, there's a person behind the badge. But for young cricketers, do something else as well. You know, you have to have education. You have to get some studies behind you, have some vocation. Mm-hmm. You know, do some, I, I spent all my time. Well, I went to uni. I went to Loughborough and Cambridge. So I had my, my degrees before I went pro. But when I was pro, I used to read all the time. I used to study all the time. When we were batting, I used to go away and study, which has meant then that I have this knowledge that I have now, which is years and years ahead of a lot because I spent that time instead of watching our players bat, which I bolt them all day, every day in the nets. I knew they were okay. I studied. Mm-hmm. So it is important that you, you're going to need, you're going to need your brain, your knowledge, your education, either before, during or after you play. So mm-hmm. that need, uh, you need some, uh, something else in your life. Mm-hmm. If you met a young fast bowler tomorrow, what sort of what was one tip you would give them from the start of the career? Mm. Um, I would say what I said earlier. Actually, don't wait, don't wait for perfection. Mm-hmm. If you you need to understand the difference between injury and soreness. Mm-hmm. You know, fast bowling is ridiculous. Eight times your body weight on front foot, four and back foot forces are more than anything else the forces are more than sprinting mm-hmm. um and you know how finely tuned they are you know 
for every one for every 10 meters they run they rest one minute so if someone did a 100 meter sprint in training they have 10 minute rest but for bowling it's like we're expected to bowl for 40 minutes an hour non-stop it's just madness but oh, now the knowledge is getting out there so mm. that is the thing though is look after your body um because it, it is your tool train correctly eat correctly recover correctly more is not better fast bowling is not about repetition but despite what nonsense the old-fashioned coach will say it's not about repetition it's not about performing uh the perfect perfect rep it's about sort of creating variability and actually training correctly what well, that might be six balls or it might be 60 balls but it's what you need and it's you as an individual mm -hmm. on topic of coaches you being a coach what would you say is sort of a perfect not a per I mean, we can't have a perfect coach but the ideal coach to have uh in cricket i would know but pep guardiola would probably be one i would i would uh think is a top mm -hmm. draw coach in cricket, I, I, I would know. I, I, I don't really. <laughs> in cricket, I tend to look outside cricket because cricket is very archaic in everything it does, but it's beginning mm -hmm. to embrace stuff. But, you know, your Mourinho's, your Guardiola's, uh, Belichick, these guys, you know, are, are proper. Mm -hmm. they, they look ahead. They look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Now we do a quick rapid fire on the show. So who's your funniest team that you ever played with? Funniest teammate, oh, Damien Wright. What's your first, your earliest cricket memory in your life? Uh, getting seven wickets uh, in primary school. Oh, wow. Um, who do you hate facing or bowling to in the nets the most? Uh, I hated bowling to Max Truscothic because mm -hmm. he made it look very easy. And I hated facing, uh, there was a few actually, you, you know, in terms of making me look silly, Shane Wong. In terms of making me look scared, show it back to uh, Sean Tate, Brett Lee. I faced all of them. Flint off. They were all quite. They were all quick. Mm -hmm. What's your most memorable moment or the most iconic moment on the field? I uh, taking the last wicket in the CNG two thousand and one and winning it for Somerset. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, one Tasha player you would love to do a bowling partnership with. Uh. That's a good question. But current or retired? All time. All time. Michael Holden. Michael Holden. Okay. What's one thing as a coach you would tell every every single cricketer around the world? Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Very true. And if you weren't playing cricket, what would you do right now? Uh well, I, I do a lot of so I'm I'm a strength and conditioning coach, so I do some stuff with uh, baseball, there's a couple of uh, Olympic coaches in the current Olympics just finished that uh, mm -hmm. I advise as well. So um, uh, I'm, I don't play cricket anymore, but so I, I would be an s &C coach. Mm -hmm. And one life lesson that cricket or sport overall taught you? As always tomorrow. As always tomorrow. Very true. Okay. We'll do a quick would you rather round as well. Would you, in your playing career, would you rather field in the infield or out of the boundary? Boundary. Boundary. Okay. Would you rather bat with the other hand or bowl with the other hand? Or bat. Bat. Okay. Would you rather play T20 cricket or test match cricket? Test match. Test match cricket or the 100? Or test match. Test match cricket. Okay. Uh, playing in swingy conditions or a bouncy wicket? Um, swingy, probably. Okay. A coach, a complete newbie, or a seasoned pro? Say it again. Coach a complete newbie at cricket or a seasoned pro cricketer? Uh, seasoned pro, probably. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Thank you so much for being my first guest on Life Canada page on season three. Is there anything Pleasure. you want to say to the, to the viewers at all? No, nah, no, it's all good. It's all good. Hopefully they've enjoyed some of my questions, uh, some of my answers. And yeah. Perfect. Follow, me on, follow me on Instagram. We'll do. I'll tag you all below. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you Brilliant. so much. Pleasure, man. Take care. You too.